In the work that I do, which has been all about space robotics and working on planetary rovers, often we're building things that are world first that nobody's done before that need to operate in really extreme environments. Exploration is at the core of all of that. I think having that sense of discovery and wonder helps feed into that process of designing and building stuff that's really, really hard in space. of somehow, somewhere being in space. That adventure, that journey of going up on a rocket and being somewhere that not a lot of other people have been and being able to do science and contribute to something. That dream probably started being out in the wilderness like this. What's happening is we lost our central core and now I've lost all our flames. Growing up camping with my parents and my brothers and hiking and fly fishing and just being outdoors, but also getting to gaze up at the stars, being there and having those moments to process and think, one day maybe I could be up there. In the context of space junk and building robotics to help clean up space junk or repair satellites, my specific role would be designing what happens on that mission. If a robotic arm was gonna go up and repair a satellite, that's thinking through everything that happens from when that arm first starts unstowing on that spacecraft to every single task that it does on the mission. Satellites have a finite life. They can break down and they can run out of propellant and when they do, they just become space junk. They will stay up there or be moved into a graveyard orbit. It could take hundreds of years for a satellite to eventually deorbit and burn up in Earth's atmosphere. And then the more and more you put up there, the higher likelihood you have of a collision between two satellites, for example. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. You can imagine the cascade of even smaller debris that's created by that collision between spacecraft. You basically reach this critical mass of debris up there that the next collision will cause a never-ending cascade of future collisions. Okay, stand by 13, we're looking at it. So we're focused on trying to make defunct satellites functional again. So we're not cleaning up after ourselves in space. We're not taking care of the orbital environment, which I like to think of as a different type of wilderness. So that's why I'm, I'm pretty passionate about satellite servicing. I think it's, it's really cool, and I think it would be neat to be a leader at the forefront of that, saying, yeah, we need to change how we do things. Heartbreaking mostly because it was something entirely out of my control and 
almost odd in a way for me because I think that this white hair appeared probably around the same time I decided I wanted to be an astronaut. I don't really believe in fate, but it was already decided for me back then that it was never going to happen. Wanting to become an astronaut was always the ultimate adventure for me. But I think since the astronaut recruitment process, I guess almost in a way it's made me feel more connected to Earth and exploring here on Earth. As much as I wanted to be an astronaut, this ability to contribute to something that could really change the whole paradigm of how we're doing things in space is just a really cool opportunity. Through that 20-year journey that I've had, my passion for the outdoors and for wilderness always felt really separate to my work as an aerospace engineer and exploring space. And it wasn't until I started working on these satellite servicing projects that I saw how interconnected both of those worlds really are. Growing up and camping every weekend with my parents, it was so important that we were taught to leave no trace, that everything we take into the wilderness comes back out with us. The space we're exploring up there is wilderness, and it's a wilderness that we need to take care of and leave as little impact as we can as we go out there and search and try and learn because we're curious and because we're explorers.